Thank you. All right, guys, are y'all seeing the welcome to kickoff? Fabulous. I just want to make sure everybody's seeing it. Good morning, Katie. <laughs> Hi, is it on? Okay. Good morning, Kaylin. How are you? Good, thank you. Let's see your where the iPhone on your device. Of course, I just have to say I love the picture, man. It's a hot mess. Yeah. Are you in front of a blue screen? I had to do something. <laughs> Currently working, so I'm trying to listen in, but. Well, we love looking at your nose. All right, everybody, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We do have a lot to do this morning. Um, if you will um, join me in the opening, um, if you'll please stand and we'll get started. Let's pretend you're saying Thank you everyone. Um, for those of you that don't know, I am Christy Hust. I am the district chair for Chaparral District. Um, on behalf of the Chaparral District and the South Plains Camp Council, we'd like to welcome you to our annual kickoff. Um, this is our first annual virtual kickoff. Um, so bear with us. We are learning just as you are about the virtual world. Um, and so we are trying to get it as seamless as possible, but I guarantee you it's not going to happen. So just kind of bear with us, give us some grace, um, and we will get through the day hopefully smiling at the end. Um, so first up, we are going to start with um, Randall Hust, who is representing the council for our, the council update. Yeah. You want me to send it? All right, before we start, uh, I just want to welcome all you guys. Thank you guys for coming, uh, giving up your Sunday. Before we start, I want to share with you, uh, Saturday, sorry. <laughs> before we start, I want to share with you a quick video that um, uh, one of our fantastic scouters, Mr. Ray Rush, put together. Um, and so I just want to share that with you, Judge. Just, what just click, it. click over here. I don't see it. And click it. Audio. 
shift on them. Was there audio? Was there audio on the opening? It was no. pretty faint. Oh, it was faint. Okay. Let's try this. Can you hear that? Barbie shake. Eight percent now. Still now? Okay, well, like we said, best laid plans. Um, look for that video because it's out there on Facebook. Uh, we'll share it, we'll push it out again. Uh, it's a very well done video, some local scouts and uh, um, just want to thank Ray for putting that together. Austin Moore helped to collect some of that footage as well. Uh, but, you know, the, the video really shows, talks about why scouting matters and, and how important it is for doing what we do. And so that's really what I want to talk just a little bit about today. Um, like I say, first of all, from our council leadership, I just want to say thank you. Nathan wasn't able to be here today. Um, and so I just, I just speak for um, those on the council executive board. Um, I know what we do on that level. We, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at the finances, we're looking at membership, we're looking at all those things. But because I've also been a volunteer uh, for the last 20 some odd years, I know what you do too. I know why you crazy people would put your uniforms on to go sit in your living room, to get on a computer, to talk to a bunch of other crazy people who are sitting in their living room in their uniform. And I bet at least half of you guys are even wearing scout pants. Am I right? Well, yeah, Barbie Taylor. I know. I know Barbie. Yeah, yeah. Scout pants. I knew it right there. There we go. Uh, some of you guys. I thought, I thought pants were optional. Yeah, I was about to say some of you guys are not wearing pants at all, and we don't even want to talk about that. Um, but like I say, I, I know what you do, and I know where your heart is, and I, would, I just want to thank you for that. Um, these are challenging times for scouting. I don't. I don't think we can get around that, and, and certainly want to talk about it. Uh, and so I just want to kind of give you some updates. I know there are a lot of questions. Uh, a lot of you guys are wondering, where are we at in our bankruptcy? Uh, where are we at with the sexual abuse cases? What all is going on? And so, um, you know, typically like all court situations, we're kind of in limbo right now. Um, there are a lot of things at play. Um, I can assure you that the National Committee and your, your council board is uh, working closely together, uh, trying to get through um, all these these challenging situations. Um, the bankruptcy proceedings are still in process. Um, a lot of them depend on um, the results of the sexual abuse um, issues there as well. So there are just a lot of things going on. Uh, and, and really for a lot of us, it's like, man, I, I don't know what the future holds for scouting. But here's what I do know is that scouting is one of those organizations where um, we have these cool values like the oath and the law that don't change, don't go away. And they're, they're probably needed more today than, than anything else in the world. And so uh, just know that those, those are still kind of in the process uh, going on. Um, I would say that, and, and I think most of you would agree with us, scouting today is safer than it's ever been. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the abuse claims, I think 95% of the abuse claims that folks are talking about happened 30 plus years ago. Um, I know most of you, if not all of you, have taken youth protection multiple times. Uh, most of you are doing everything that you can do to make sure our, our, our youth are safe. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, all right, so let's talk. There, there is, you know, and as, as we go through these things and, and um, the National Council tries to find ways to continue to be viable so that we don't have to do drastic things and we can continue to operate uh, even on the other side of our uh, bankruptcy proceedings. Um, one of the things that they do, most of you guys have already heard, uh, but just wanna make sure that everybody understands exactly where we're at. There is gonna be another fee increase. Um, this year, the annual fee will go up to 66. There's gonna be two more increases. They've already given us a heads up. Uh, so next year we'll go up to 72 year after that, it will go to 75, okay? So that will be the annual registration fee. Um, the unit charter fee has also gone up and I believe it's gone up to $75. And then they've also instituted a $25, basically join fee, new scout fee. So I just want you to be aware of those fees. 
it still works um, that if a scout comes in, like say on school night for scouting, they come in in September, we're still able to prorate them. And so they would only be uh, responsible for uh, $22 to pay for the rest of the year. And then if they were a new scout, that would be the $25 on top of that. Uh, and then hopefully as units are doing their, um, their fundraising, they'll be able to pay for that recharter and that money will just continue. Uh, the scout will earn his way from there on. And so that's, that's uh, the theory. I know the unit commissioners are working diligently with those unit leaders uh, to try to help them uh, revamp budgets and, and talk about different fundraising opportunities as well. Um, but I did want you to know that that's out there. They gave all the councils an option uh, to also charge a council fee, a program fee. Uh, our council has historically charged uh, $1 per scout uh, to help offset the cost of insurance. I can assure you that that doesn't come close to paying for our insurance, uh, but it does help. Uh, and we opted not to charge a program fee. We're going to continue to do the dollar per scout, um, but we are not charging a program fee. We could have gone up to $45 per scout, and we just didn't feel like that was, that was a burden that we needed to put on uh, you folks as volunteers and our scouts that are out there. So um, just wanted you to know that. Now, that's kind of the negative side. Let's talk about some of the good sides. Uh, one of the coolest things is that our council, South Plains Council at Camp Post, uh, held one of the few summer camps that happened in the United States. Uh, most summer camps council, uh, canceled. Uh, I think there were only about 20% of the councils that actually held a summer camp. And we were one of those, and it was a very successful week. I know uh, several of the folks that are on here uh, were there at Post enjoying the, the week and the program that was offered. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for that. Uh, we've got some amazing, vibrant programs that are happening all over the South Plains Council. Uh, units are finding creative ways to meet, uh, to be together, to do activities, uh, things from virtual campouts to meetings in the park, uh, just all kinds of amazing things that, that you guys as creative, amazing volunteers have found ways to do scouting even in the midst of this pandemic, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it has been really neat to see um, the impact that the young ladies have brought to this program. Let me tell you what, now I've worked with, with young men for years, uh, obviously as a scouting volunteer. The young ladies have raised the bar. Let me tell you what, these girls are sharp. These girls are making the boys be sharp. So you guys out there that are working specifically with the young ladies, thank you so much. Y'all are doing amazing jobs. I uh, saw a uh, pic just the other day of a bunch of young ladies that got inducted into the OA. Uh, just just recently, and so uh, just some exciting times for that. Um, we've got a national youth leader training scheduled uh, to take place next year. Uh, we're actually going to do a week-long training in TR, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, we'll also have our wood badge next year as well. Forrest, I, I noticed he's on the call, and I know you said you're working, Forrest, and I thank you for giving up your time and being here. Uh, Forrest, do you want to talk just for a second about wood badge if you're available? Or just like, yes, there it um, is. Yeah, so uh, what badge is taking place? Um, I, the dates are, um, a moment. April, April 22nd. April 23rd, 24th, 25th, and May 1st, 2nd. So uh, those of you that don't know anything about Wood Badge, um, it's a leadership course, um, unlike anything else. Um, and I will promise you, you will use it in your scouting career, in your life, at your work, at home, um, everywhere. Um, and it's part of all that, you know, continuing to learn and, and grow. So sign up for Wood Badge. I don't know if we have a registration available yet or not, but um, you can definitely get in and um, get signed up. If you visit the council office, I'm sure they'll uh, take your name down and take your money for sure. All right, Forrest, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, if, you, if you have not taken Wood Badge, I want to strongly encourage you to. Uh, this is a, a leadership program that will absolutely change your life. Uh, I took it. Um, 
20 plus years ago and I still use the things that I learned in Wood Badge every single day of my life. Uh, so I, I can't talk enough about that. NYLT is the youth version basically of Wood Badge uh, and it's an outstanding leadership training as well. I know some of you guys have had your, your youth go through that program. Uh, and so to be able to host a week long NYLT at our beautiful Camp Tresoritos is gonna be a, a pretty neat uh, opportunity this year. So I'm looking forward to that as well. I do want to just kind of close with some thoughts, um, especially as we talk about the um, really the challenging times that we have ahead. One of the things that I do want to remind you guys of, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the mission of the Boy Scouts of America. You know, it's kind of funny for years, you'd ask that question in a training and uh, you know, some people would kind of muddle through it. I, I'll never forget Dennis Fairbairn would always just be able to repeat it from memory. and. Honestly, he inspired me because I had forgotten. A lot of times we get caught up in, at the time for me as a, as a scout master and, and cub master, I get caught up in the program things. I get caught up in, uh, you know, how many kids have we recruited? Um, are we doing everything? Are we camping every month? Are we doing the things we're supposed to? And sometimes we get focused on those things. And I would forget that we actually have a mission. And our mission is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and Law. Now, all of those things that we do to make that happen, the camping, the uh, Pinewood Derbies, all of those things that we do um, are amazing and, and they help those things. But the, the true reality is we're helping young people make moral and ethical choices by giving them the Scout Oath and Law. Think about how many of you guys have watched the news just re recently? there has been no time greater than right now to help these young people make moral and ethical choices by instilling in them the scout oath and law. We have four aims in scouting, and I know most of you guys are familiar with this. Character development, leadership development, citizenship training, and personal fitness. Again, right along with the mission of the Boy Scouts of America, there's no greater time in our country, no greater need for these things than right now. So even as we talk about things like bankruptcy, sexual abuse, the increases, things that, that start to make us all really just cringe, let's all remember that we've got a mission. We're needed now more than ever. Teddy Roosevelt's famous for saying, get action, move, go, do. I know I'm preached to the choir, because like I said, you guys are here in your living room, in your brown shirts on a Saturday morning, but go out there and touch your leaders. Go out there and reach out to those students. Recruit, bring new kids into the program. Reach out and start instilling in these guys the values of the Scout Oath and Law. Again, I want to thank you guys for, for being here and being a part I actually want to uh, turn this over to Austin Moore. I want to have him uh, speak a little bit about um, the Order of the Arrow. For those of you guys that don't know, the Order of the Arrow is our National Camping Society, our National Honor Society of Camping, and, and uh, Austin is our advisor. Uh, and a fine young man that I have known since he was just a, a wee scout, and uh, to see the man he's become has, has been pretty cool, and it uh, reiterates those, that, that mission that we just talked about. Uh, so, Austin, I want to turn it over to you, and again, thank you guys so much for being here, uh, for your time. If you have any questions for me, feel free to pop them into the chat box, uh, and I'll be monitoring that as well. Thank you again. Excellent. Thank you, Randy. Um, I'm not going to take too much of everybody's time. I have a reputation for being a talker. I'm going to try to keep it under control. But as Randy mentioned, my name is Austin Moore. I am the Lodge Advisor. Uh, for our uh, Order of the Arrow Lodge um, and South Plains Council. We are Natona Lodge. And like I said, I could talk for hours about, about OA, Order of the Arrow, but I also want to share a couple of points about uh, our purpose. Um, and and the, first, the first point of that, and uh, I re refer you to the, the packets that, that Christy sent out um, to uh, view the, the full mission and purpose statement, but to distill that, um, we, we are an honor society uh, for scouting, um, and we're, we're pretty unapologetic about that. There are uh, membership criteria, um, and uh, our members are voted on by their peers uh, for uh, both youth and adult. 
Uh, but we uh, promote camping, we promote responsible outdoor adventure, and uh, we promote sustainability in the outdoors. Um, and we also uh, promote um, just kind of that next level, more intensive uh, leadership development. Um, if you have been through Wood Badge or if you're familiar with the scouting uh, program in general, um, you start with Cub Scouting, a uh, very family oriented. And then as you uh, progress uh, through the different programs, uh, the leadership is placed uh, more and more uh, on the youth. And uh, I really try to uh, get our, our officers and our lodge members to, to really take charge and own the program. So um, one, one thing I would like to point out, uh, we're, we're a very different organization today than what I think a lot of people remember um, from their youth or uh, stories from their father or from their grandfather. Um, and I would, again, encourage you to read through the uh, documentation that I provided in the, the kickoff pamphlet. Um, if you have any questions about that, uh, let me know. Um, there are um, some major roles that can be uh, being played in um, your unit. Uh, if you do not have, uh, if you're a Scouts BSA unit, a uh, venture crew, um, or a, um, a, uh, a ship, um, if we have any ships that want to register. Um, there are uh, youth positions that qualify for uh, leadership requirements for rank advancement. Uh, that occur in in your unit and those people have real jobs and that's a really big opportunity really big opportunity uh, for that person to really get plugged in uh, with our group and be able to uh, plug your unit in as a whole uh, to our group um, the last thing i want to mention is we do have a um, a long-term service project that goes on out at camp post um, and we have some graphics about that in your in your packets but uh, a lot of what that has to do with is if you've been to Lake Marjorie, um, there's several, or if you've been to Camp Post, you may have uh, seen our lake, Lake Marjorie. If you haven't been out there recently, it's um, it's been pretty empty. Um, but our guys are uh, really trying to lead and facilitate opportunities for uh, your units and uh, and uh, our our members and uh, units alike, uh, whether they're um, members of the order they are or not to be able to come out and uh, impact a conservation project uh, that is addressing some of the drainage uh, field for that lake. Um, we, we like to think that we helped a lot this year. Uh, it's really great when you get 10, 12 inches of rain. We can't take all the credit, um, but if that is something that your unit is looking for, please let me know. Uh, my contact information is everywhere. Um, you can visit nakona150.org, uh, but we would uh, love to host some folks down there and uh, get you some conservation service hours for rank advancement um, and just getting outside and, and doing a cool project. So um, I believe that's all I have at the moment. Like I said, if y'all have any questions, um, we're, we're a little bit different group today than we were 50 years ago um, and we'll be different tomorrow than we were uh, yesterday. So uh, if y'all have any questions at all about Order of the Arrow, please let me know um, and prepare to have your ear talked off for a little bit. But um, if there's no questions right now, then I will uh, turn it back over to, I believe, Randall or Christy. It's always a surprise, isn't it? Who's going to be at the computer? <laughs> it is me. So we are going to move to our Chaparral District's Key 3. Um, so I will start with Miss Katie. Um, she is our executive um, for our district and all the districts, quite honestly. So, um, Katie, um, just give us some background on what's going on and tell us what you want us to know. So, um, we are starting to transition into our fall programming. It'll look a little bit different this year, but we are excited to announce that we plan on having fall activities in person. Um, we are planning on having a cub camp, Weeblows Woods, and a fall camporee, along with maybe a few other surprise events. So the dates for these events can be found in the district handbook that Christy is working on getting to you guys. These dates are set, so you can start talking to your parents, your families, your kids, getting them excited about it. I will say a lot of the um, Camping stuff, like the Cub Day, they will just be day activities. There won't be any overnight just because of the 
ever-changing COVID situation right now, but we are working on getting back into the swing of in-person events, and so it'll be baby steps, but we are slowly getting there. Um, if you guys need anything at all, feel free to reach out to Christy or me, Barbie Taylor, Mike May, Randall Hust, any of us really. We want you guys to stick around and we want you guys to feel like you can come talk to us if you see something that we could be doing better. And I know that we have a couple of units on here that aren't in the Chaparral district and we just want you guys to know that you're welcome to anything that we do. So if you wanna to come to Roundtable, you're more than welcome to come to that. Um, we're kind of transitioning into more of a council-wide thing rather than individual districts, just so we can help each other and build off of what everyone is doing. That's really all I have. So Christy, I will give it back to you. You're muted, there you go. Yeah, I am. I'm trying to find the link for the um, the program guide. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Mike May, who is our district commissioner. I'm going to let him give you some insights on what's going on in the commissioner world. Well, good morning. It's good to see everybody. Um, this is a challenging time, but uh, challenging times bring out the best and a lot of people and I know it's going to bring out the best in us. Um, this is a time that we need to be well planned and creative and uh, we've got a bunch of ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen called unit commissioners that are here to assist you with that. So as you're facing the challenges of not having a place to meet possibly or uh, trying to figure out how to get a bunch of uh, Cub Scouts together to have a lesson, um, socially distanced or safely, you can reach out to the unit commissioners and on the bill that Christy has provided, the district kicked off handout, there is a list with all the Chaparral unit commissioners with their contact information with phone numbers and emails. And so we would love for you to reach out to us and us help you as best we can. If we don't have the answer, we uh, will try to find somebody that has the expertise, has the answers or knows something about technology if you're trying to do some virtual things but reach out to us um, we want to hear from you we are here to to assist you in any way we possibly can we also have uh, round tables and i'm sure christy's going to be calling on our wonderful round table commissioner barbie to let us uh, have some information on that but uh, we are here to help and um, and assist you in any way we can so please 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 reach out to us thank you All right, with that, I will turn it over to Barbie Taylor and ask her to give us an update on what's gonna be happening with roundtables. Thanks, Christy. So roundtables are gonna be moving to more of a virtual platform. We found um, nationally that during the pandemic crisis, most people were doing virtual roundtables and they had a very high attendance and good participation, more so than some of the in-person roundtables of the past. And so we're gonna have a hybrid model moving forward. This coming Thursday, August the 13th, our round table is gonna be a social event. It's our annual cook-off and potluck, as well as our ice cream social. It's gonna be at the scout office at 7 p.m. Um, you're welcome to bring a side dish and or an ice cream or dessert and your chair. And then we have in the um, kickoff guide, our future dates for round tables for the coming year. And the majority of them will be virtual, but we'll also have as many as two social events as well, just for us all to get together. But that's really gonna allow us to provide some good content to people, allow people outside of our district to participate and um, cut down on some of the, the drive time and those types of things that may have prevented people from attending in the past. So we're really excited about the new format. We're gonna be getting a lot of support from national for content and themes and ideas and information to share. So we hope that you all come join us. Thank you, Barbie. Um, not that you could hear that video, but that well-made opening actually did come from the um, Roundtable web page, the support web page. So that will be some of the things you will be seeing um, in the uh, virtual roundtables that are coming up. So 
Um, at this time, I'm going to take over and I'm going to um, just talk to you about district committee and what we've got going on. Um, I'm going to introduce a few of my people. Um, Randall Shaw, if you'll wave, um, he is in charge of training. Um, Sammy Shaw, who is also on, wave Sammy. Um, she's in charge of membership. I have Cora Rush, who is in charge of finance. Um, on finance is Chris Brown as well. So Chris, if you'll wave. Under membership is Sonia Morton as our Weeblos to Scout transition. Um, Amber is on the phone and um, I know she was on the phone. I see her. Um, she is here as well. She's our activities chair. And with that is Kaylin Furman, who is also part of activities. And then um, Barbie Taylor is our vice chair and she will be taking over as chair starting um, January 1. So um, you're gonna get a new leader um, to keep us moving forward. And we're very excited about that because she's gonna do a fabulous job. So um, we're always looking for people for a district committee. If you're interested, please, please, please let us know. You can talk to any of those people. They'll tell you just how exciting and fun it is. Um, and y'all will say that, children, <laughs> just kidding. Um, we do try to have a good time. Um, and so I just wanna encourage you, if, if you're looking for some way to serve more youth than what you're serving now, district or commissioner work is a great way to do that. Um, what? Especially, yes, Randall said, especially if you're in the outlying districts where they really just don't have the, um, the, the setup that we have. Um, I would like to say if you're from an outlying district and you want to be a part of district committee, um, shoot me an email. I'll put it into the chat box for you. Shoot me an email. I'll be happy to invite you to our meetings. Right now they're virtual. They're via Zoom. So you are more than welcome to attend. We are always looking for, um, we're always looking for that um, outside experience. Um, we live in Lubbock. We know how to do Lubbock really well, but that doesn't mean it, it services the outlying districts really well. And so we're going to try to focus on that as well. Um, what can we do to help the outlying districts? Um, not that they need help, but if they do, we want to be there as a resource. Um, and we just want to help them with their program as well. I do have a couple of things. I am going to throw some people um, out there, they don't know I'm going to do this. And, and you can look at all of their faces and see the terror. Um, I'm going to start with Sonia. She knew that was coming, by the way. Um, and I'm going to ask her to talk a little bit about Weeblos to Scout Transition. Um, and if she needs, she needs a few things from you guys. And so if, I'm going to turn it over to her and let her talk about that. Thanks, Christy. Um, so yes, I'm in charge of Weeblos to Scout Transition. Um, my responsibility is essentially just to work with PACs and troops uh, to help with crossover ceremonies, um, to kind of be that liaison to make sure that Arrow of Light Scouts are finding their place in a troop. Um, there's a remarkable number of youth that end up dropping out of Scouts uh, between uh, fifth grade and sixth grade. Um, and so that's what I've been tasked to help with is to try to keep that from happening and, and to keep them in the program. Uh, it's really disheartening to see children that have been in the program uh, since first grade and now kindergarten, um, they get all the way through and then, you know, they leave right before uh, they're really challenged in the scouting program. Um, so many of you may have already received some emails from me in regards to crossover. Uh, my understanding is everyone has had a chance to cross over at this point, I believe. Um, but now with the upcoming school year, uh, you might be hearing from me again here pretty soon. I'm trying to uh, come up with a plan on how to track those kids that just crossed over to make sure that they did find a unit um, and to make sure that, you know, they're still active. I'm just kind of tracing them and making sure that you know that I'm doing the best I can to to keep them in the program so be looking forward to uh, emails from me if you are a, a cub master or a Weeblos den leader um, 
think that's it. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I, I noticed that um, Randall Shaw just disappeared from his screen. He ran away out of fear. <laughs> no. Um, hey, Randall, um, as far as training goes, you want to give us an update and tell us what we need to be doing? Sure. <clears throat> uh, lots of fun. One thing is uh, for YPT, Youth Protection Training, uh, a lot of us have had it recently expire or will have it re, uh, expire shortly. So we need to all get back in and make sure our YPT is up to date. Uh, go ahead and take the course uh, and get that done. We're at about 25% right now that uh, have expired. So we really need to get on that and have your uh, people in your units do that. Then we've got some dates coming up. Uh, September the 19th, we have Introduction to Outdoor Leader Skills. Uh, that'll be out at Camp Post, and the uh, registration information should already be up on the website. Uh, then October 3rd, we have Baloo, once again out at Camp Post. Registration will be up on the, the website. Those are both, uh, the IOLS is for uh, the uh, Older Scout program, and Baloo is for the uh, Cubs program. And then on October 10th, we're going to have a leader specific for the Cubs, and that information will be coming up to the website soon. It's not up there yet. And then on October 24th, we'll have leader specific for the Older Scout program. Uh, and those are all new trainings, so I encourage everybody to get in, even though you may have already taken some of this stuff. Uh, it, there's a whole new syllabus for it, so it could be a lot of fun. That's pretty much what I've got. So, Randall, if people wanted to get involved with your specific committee, how could they do that? Uh, contact me. I can put my email in the uh, link there, and we'll get them signed up and, and get them helping. Fantastic. Um, next, I will um, go to Cora, who is our um, transitional finance person. I will say if you um, don't feel comfortable serving on the committee, maybe you have someone in your unit that you know would be great, maybe at finance or training or um, anything else, please forward those names to us because we, we will take every help we can get. So I'm going to turn it over to Cora and let Cora talk about finance for a few minutes. Good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, it doesn't sound very exciting to be on the finance committee, but with all that's going on, I can't think of a more important position in any unit than finance. And that's everything from fundraising, budgeting, planning, and some of the creative new things that you're going to be doing might require new tools or, or new uh, types of supplies in your units. So it's critical at this time that you start planning. And when you have a great plan, then it's easier to execute and, and deliver on the promise that we have for all of our scouts. From a district level, we are still struggling a little bit with Friends of Scouting, which is what supports so many of our local programs. And, you know, in our communities, there's not a greater time than ever for us to be engaged in helping support our communities. So I just encourage all of you to uh, join, participate. And if you're interested in some of these programs from a district level, uh, just give me a call or contact me by email. That's usually the best way to reach me. And that would be krush at unitedtexas.com. Um, to go along with that, um, that video that you saw that was so great that you couldn't hear, um, <clears throat> we do have a link to that video, um, and we also have a pre-made letter. Um, I would challenge some of you, um, we're going to talk about this later at the, in the closing, but if you are interested in that, please let me know, um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, the last, not the last, but the next one is activities, um, and I will see if Amber would like to talk. We'll see if she unmutes, maybe not. 
activities is a great, great, great committee. Um, they have, they do all the, I don't want to say they do all the fun stuff. They do all the fun stuff. They do camperies. They do um, cub days. They do twilight camp. They do the Pinewood Derbies. Um, it's a really great um, committee to be on and they're looking at some new things, but I will tell you it is, um, it is the more people we have on that committee, the better off we are um, because it I, just spreads the well. Are you there, Amber? I am. It, I couldn't find the button. <laughs> That's okay. Have at it. Um, so I uh, work with Christy and a couple other people with activities, things like Cub Camp and um, the Weeblos Woods and hopefully some other activities I'd like to bring forth uh, this year, hopefully. Um, so yeah, and we always need uh, help. So if anybody's interested, just uh, let me know and definitely uh, email me. I can post my email or Christy knows how to get a hold of me. Uh, phone number, email, text, whatever works. So yeah. Yes, Randy said, even carrier pigeon, we will take that too. Um, <laughs> the person I am going to introduce is going to be um, Sammy Shaw. Um, and I want her to talk, she said, no, I want her to talk a little bit about membership. Um, and, um, you know, recharter is coming. So is there anything we need to know about all of that good stuff, Miss Sammy? Um, with membership, I, it would be helpful if everybody, of course, I'm the, also the registrar at the council office, if everybody didn't know. Um, it would kind of be helpful if everybody probably in the, at the end of September maybe could um, it wouldn't bother me if everybody could call or email me and ask for rosters maybe end of September 1st of October um, and ask for rosters and kind of just double check and make sure that everybody that you have on your your unit books um, are registered and active that kind of get a, a head start. Um, we do include a roster in the recharger packets. Um, those hopefully will go out probably 1st of October. That's my goal. <laughs> of course, we are very short staffed, um, but that's my goal. That's probably the best way to kind of get a head start. Um, if you want to join the membership committee, just Holler at me at the council office. So um, we will have the recharter packets, like you said, in October. Along with that recharter packet will come your JTE information. Um, the um, BSA has updated the, B, uh, the JTE. The updated versions are in the guide. And so um, they're, they're allowing some virtual meetings and some allowances due to COVID, they are trying as best they can with that. The one thing I will say is that Scout Book is now linked, it is my understanding, to the um, Service Hours website. So if you put your Service Hours into Scout Book, then it will automatically link over. Um, and the reason I say that is because as a district and as a council, we also have JTE scores. Um, and I did look at those this last week and our service hours are zero. Um, and I know that's not true. Um, so I don't know if there's an issue. I don't know if everybody doesn't put their service hours in until the end of the year. Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to encourage you to put those service hours in as you do them, as your, as your PAT or troop does them, as your DEN or patrol does them, put those hours in. Um, into Scout Book, let them transfer over to the website um, because it is something that as a council we are graded on. And the honest truth is, is you guys, we do a lot of service. Um, I just, we're not getting credit for all the service that we do. So um, as part of your JTE and your recharter, um, you know, I just wanted to bring that to the forefront that it is in Scout Book now and they do link. Um, the uh, last committee I have is advancement. Um, we do not, our advancement committee is in transition, so I need advancement people. 
Um, we have an Eagle Scout um, chair. His name is James Livermore. He's in charge of working through the Eagle process with all of the boys. I do not have a Cub Scout uh, advancement chair right now. Um, and Wade Redman is our Scouts BSA chair. Um, but he, his son is getting his Eagle, so he may be resigning his position. So um, if you're interested in advancement, we always um, love having more people on the committee. So, so that's kind of uh, the Chaparral District Committee. Um, we, we have a lot of fun. We get together once a month um, and we try to do, um, I don't know what Randall Shaw just did, but he is laughing his head off. I don't, y'all can't see him, but he is, something tickled him and it cracks me up to watch him. Um, but we have a good time. We, we try to look at what we do as um, more serving more youth than we can serve in our individual um, units. And what I would challenge you is, is I know every unit has those parents who are sitting on the sidelines. They're great parents, they're sharp. Maybe they just don't, they're not comfortable with tying that knot and that's what keeps them from volunteering. Um, I do not require knot tying to be on my committee, okay? You can tell them I said that. I can't tie knots either. But doesn't mean, don't shake your head at me, Randall. Shaw, I heard, saw that, but uh, it doesn't mean they can't serve. We, we love people and, and we try not to just throw you to the wolves. We'll, we'll train you up and, and get you ready. So, so that's kind of our district um, um, as a whole, um, the key three. Um, Mike, Katie, do you have anything to add before we move on? They both shook their heads no. All right. So um, I was going to show you this really great video um, of in the closing, and I'll try to get that in. So here's how this is going to work. Our learning sessions are for the first session, it's going to have um, from 10 to 1055, we're going to have two sessions. One is going to be popcorn and one is going to be finances. Um, I will pull us all back together. And then from 11 to 1155, we'll have school night for scouting and online registration and recruitment. Um, so what I have is breakout rooms. So here in a second, I'm just gonna go through the list and I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say things like, Michael, Jordan, where do you wanna go? Do you wanna go to popcorn? Do you wanna go to finance? And I'm gonna put you in one of the two breakout rooms and then I will open the rooms. What I'm gonna ask is Barbie, Alan, and Katie, I've made you all co-hosts. So if you are able to those breakout sessions um, I would greatly appreciate it and I am going to go ahead and make Sonia Morton a co-host as well um, so if you are in one of those sessions if you will record that for us so that we can offer that information as well um, and then what we'll do is I'll bring you back at 1155 um, and we're gonna um, do a, a quick closing and then we'll go from there. But before we do that, I wanna make sure that we have answered any questions that you might have had. So do you guys have any questions? Or is everybody like, stop it, let me get to popcorn. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and not rename that. Y'all, do y'all ever have days where you just are like, this is not working the way it's supposed to? I am having that day. And now I'm going to stop share real quick, guys. Breakout rooms. It won't let me put anybody in my breakout rooms. Interesting, we'll start over. All right. Alan Taylor, would you like to go to popcorn? Finance. Finance, all right. Amy G, popcorn or finance? We'll go to popcorn. Um, Ashley Salazar, popcorn or finance? I'll do finance. 
Um, Austin Moore, are you going to do popcorn or are you going to do finance? I will do finance. All right. Barbie Taylor, popcorn or finance? Popcorn, please. Um, Cloyce, popcorn or finance? Finance. Crystal, would you like to do popcorn or finance? Popcorn. David Johnson, popcorn or finance? Finance. Uh, Forrest, popcorn or finance? Forrest. Forrest is working, Forrest says leave me alone. Um, Fritz, do you want to go to popcorn or finance? Let's do finance. All right. Um, iPhone is going to be Amber, popcorn or finance? Amber. Popcorn. Thank you. Jan, would you like um, finance or popcorn? Finance, please. Uh, Jennifer Johnson, popcorn or finance? Popcorn. Um, Chris is going to popcorn. Um, John, uh, finance or popcorn? Finance, please. Josh. Popcorn or finance? said finance. Thank you. Um, Jay Thor, popcorn or finance? Finance. Katie, which one would you like to go to, ma'am? Um, popcorn, please. Uh, Kaylin, popcorn or finance? Finance. Uh, Core is going to finance. Margarita, would you like to go to popcorn or finance? Popcorn, please. Uh, Mark Franklin, popcorn or finance? Finance, please. Um, Michael Jordan. Finance, please. Mike May, you gonna go to one? Popcorn? Uh, Randall Sammy Shaw? It's just Randall, I know. We didn't hear any of that. Hang on, he's getting there. Popcorn, yeah. please. Sammy? Popcorn. Sonia? Popcorn. Um, and Travis McCullough? Popcorn, please. <clears throat> We're in another breakout room. So I have, all right. Alan, Ashley, Austin, Cloyce, David Johnson, Forrest, Fritz, Jan, John, Josh, Jay Thor, Kaylin, Cora, Mark Franklin, and Michael Jordan going into finance. Anybody, did I get you in the wrong place? All right. Anybody want to take a break before I start the rooms? I see a couple of heads. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you about a four minute break. We're going to start our rooms at 10 o'clock. All right. Thanks, guys.
Chris and Cora, um, the rooms are set for 55 minutes and you will get a two minute warning before they close out and they will close out automatically. I can't, I can't adjust that. Just wanted you guys to know. All right, I don't know if everyone is back, but it is 10 o'clock by my, um, my clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the rooms. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box, like I said, and we will be happy to try to answer them. Thank you guys. I was like, go, 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 go. That was supposed to go. They have to agree to go. So they have to join. So you can tell who's not back. Like Randall's not back. Katie's not back. You can tell who's not back. Join the room. Oh, no. Um, there you go. You do have to accept the invite to the room. Um, Jan, did we not get you to a room? Okay, she just not joined. All right. Fantastic. Enjoy your session.